Hello and welcome. This movie will show you the duct cable solid optics can provide and what the differences are. Uh, duct stands for direct attached cables, uh, which is an SFP plus or uh, an QSFP directly attached to a glass fiber cable or a copper cable. First, the have to notes. Um, they are coming in different aliases Twin X, H10G, copper uh, or direct copper, AOC, which stands for active optical cable or dark direct attached cables. Uh, there are different techniques. Uh, you've got active copper, uh, passive copper, and active optical. We'll go into that uh, a bit later. They are in SFP Plus and QSFP. Uh, there are XFPs on the market as well, but the market is really slim uh, for that. So so we don't supply them at this moment. Uh, they are available as 10 gig and 40 gig, um, and the 10 gigs can function on fiber channel as well. Uh, there are breakout cables from QSFP 40 gig to 4 times 10 gig. We'll go into that a bit later. I'll show you a couple of examples. And on the cable, the copper cables, you will see a lot of written the AWG, which is the shielding. Uh, AWG stands for American Wire Gog. It's the quality of the shielding of the cable, as you can imagine, uh, due to the high uh, velocity or the high uh, signals. Uh, speed you have to have a really good shielding for the signal to come to the other side and there's different shielding quality on that first of all the duct cables come, come in three different versions this is the 10 gig duct cables they have passive active and active optical Passive is the most simple one where uh, there's an, a shielded wire uh, just on the place where the lasers are so the laser signal will send directly to the receiver side of the other side and uh, this electronics uh, you don't need a lot of uh, electronics for that and hence the price is really cheap but it cannot go more than five meters and even with the five meters you can have problems because the signal strength of your switch or your router is not good enough but I'll explain that a bit later. Active co uh, copper uh, is um, it's amplifying the signal of the laser, uh, which means um, the signal comes in, it will amplify it, and uh, it will have some more electronics for forward error control and some other Ethernet framing uh, chips on it, and thus they are a bit more expensive. The last one is the active optical, which is basically an SR optic, uh, but then with uh, a wire attached to it. And uh, this is one that we have been deploying uh, a lot lately. The duct cables uh, have some limitations. So the passive duct um, the, uh, can go up to 5 meters. We have them in 1, 2, 3 and 5 meters in stock. Uh, the active uh, we don't supply anymore. That has to do with the fact that our active optical cable is cheaper than the active duct cable and the properties of the active optical cables are better than the active deck cables. Um, the active duct cable or the active optical cables can go up to 100 meters uh, from 1 uh, to 100 meters. The 40 gig duct cables, um, the passive and the active uh, for just the QSFP to QSFP. And there's a breakout cable as well, where you have on one hand the QSFP, uh, which breaks it out in four times uh, an SFP. And uh, we have that in a copper version and an active optical as well. If you want to do XFP on the other side, we would recommend you just go for an SR and an optical breakout cable, MPO to four times uh, or eight times LC cable and then use uh, XFPs. Also for the 40 gig duct cables um, there are some limitations. The passive QSFP can go up to 3 meters uh, and of course the active QSFP so the class 501 can go up to 100 meters. The breakout cables uh, start uh, we have them passive from 2 and 3 meters. Uh, there's no point making a 1 meter one because the cable is so thick and the active uh, optical breakout cable can go up to 100 meters from 2 meters up to uh, 100 meters. There are some considerations using duct cables. It is a real cheap technique and of course for a, a 10 gig line, uh, if you just want to make a 10 gig line, it's a great uh, cheap solution. 
but you have to have some considerations. First of all, uh, you need coding on both sides. Uh, if it's just going from a Cisco to a Cisco, uh, that's our standard coding, so it's no problem. But if you need to go from a Cisco to a Juniper, from a Juniper to an Intel X50 card, uh, 520 card, you just need coding on both sides. So take that into consideration. Uh, also, check what your router or switch ports. There are brocade switches, for example, that only accept active optical cables and not passive optical cables because the signaling strength of their signal, uh, which goes on the SFP, is not strong enough. Uh, you can come, uh, you can see CFC errors with five meter duct cables also has to do with the fact that not every brand, who or why, for example, isn't giving enough signal strength on it. And then uh, the five meters, uh, the package just doesn't arrive correctly on the other side of the five meters, and you will see CRC errors. Uh, passive duck, uh, what we've seen uh, is you can get fake links up, which means uh, if you have a, a server with an Intel card uh, which is booting on, uh, it, and not uh, when only le the electricity is on, you will see the link up on the Cisco switch. Which is a bit weird, of course, but that has to do with uh, the technique being completely electronic. Uh, and also a thing that you have to take into consideration, the HP uh, copper cables are really hard to get uh, because they're using a different hardware. Thank you very much.